Hello and welcome again. Um, I'm back in the park again and I'm going to do a video this time about a, probably the most serious question um, that I address in my practice as a singer and as a singing teacher and that's my vo voice hurts. What should I do? Um, and my own experience of that is that 20 odd years ago um, I had a really quite painful voice just I'd open my mouth to sing something and probably a few lines later I would just my throat would just start getting more sore um, and it, it applied to talking as well you know I'd go to a bar or a nightclub or something and it, it wouldn't take long like a minute or two of trying to shout at people and to be heard over the music and I would be in a lot of pain and my voice would just be destroyed the next day and of course the capacity of it to sing then was not good and I knew that if I carried this on <laughs> I wasn't going to be able to keep this you know I wasn't going to be able to sing very much and it, it very much frustrated me because I think I'd, I'd reached a point in my life where I decided without a shadow of doubt that singing was what I wanted to do and you know, it wasn't going to happen basically and um, 20 years later this is not a problem Right, it has taken me a long time to sort this out. Um, I would say probably after about 10 years or so, I was able to sing freely. Um, and then probably it took me another 10 years to be able to sing freely in the way that I actually wanted to. Um, it doesn't have to take that long. I had, another, I had a lot of health issues to sort out along the way which really took some thinking outside the box because there wasn't really anybody there just offering a solution to them. So I, I don't think it would necessarily take anywhere near that long for someone else. And I think it also, it was linked into my creative journey as well, which um, slowed me down somewhat, let's just say. Um, the most important thing to know is that freely moving vocal cords do not hurt right generally unless there's some really drastic medical problem going on if you're you're blowing air through your vocal cords and they're just vibrating freely they are not going to hurt and you are not going to do them any damage um, and the reason that they're not moving freely is because of the habitual movements that you've built up either in childhood or in response to some shock and they may either slowly or quickly eventually result in damage to your vocal cords and pain and deterioration of your voice. So in a sense, the way to cure that is the same as it is to create more flexibility in your voice and more consistency in your voice and more capacity in your voice as, as we address in all these videos. It's to break those habit patterns and to become aware of them and then have a choice whether you move into them or not. Um, and those habit patterns can be physical, they can be emotional. It can also be related to some health issue. I mean, like, if your diet is really badly wrong and you're hunched up over your stomach the whole time because you're intolerant to those foods and it's hurting, well, that hunching up over your stomach can produce a similar movement literally to maintain your balance in your neck, which is tension, and it will cause you pain. And, have an adverse effect on your voice. I mean, it can, it can really be as banal as that. Um, I think to address the question, what do I do? You know, I mean, I'm at this point where singing a few lines just starts to hurt really fairly quickly. Um, the answer to that question is to tease out, first of all, what situations make it worse, right? So is it worse when I'm playing an instrument at the same time? Is it worse when I'm playing partic singing particular songs? Is it worse when I've had to shout to get myself heard in a bar because I'm going to play later on and I'm chatting with people? No, um, what else? I scribbled down some notes here. Uh, yeah, I mean, particular songs. Um, what you can try, I mean, so th those are factors you can control to an extent. You know, you can just not talk to people in that bar and so not mess up your voice. Or you can ask them to get closer or you can go outside 
and chat with them where it's quieter. You know, there are things they can, you can do and it may be a bit embarrassing and involve a change in your habits, but there's, there's just immediate changes you can make that will make life easier when you're practicing. If you sing without a guitar or without a piano and find that you're not in pain, well, then you need to do some practicing without a guitar and without a piano and understand what the difference is between that when you have that guitar and that piano in front of you. And maybe, maybe you have to practice the instrument more so that you're freer to pay more attention to the vocals. Another thing might be, I mean, sometimes I used to have problems singing over the volume of my guitar or, or my piano. Like literally, I'd, I'd be straining to make my voice high, louder. And if I plugged in a set of headphones and plugged in a microphone and sang into that mic and then turned the balance on that mic up really high, I could sing extremely quietly and suddenly get a result that was pleasing. Now, years later, I can sing quite loud if I want to because I understand what's going on. But as an immediate remedial effect that allows you to sing and enjoy singing, turning up that balance really high on your voice can it can be absolutely just liberating because suddenly you're virtually whispering into the mic and you're getting an amazing result out of it so there's there's all sorts of things you can do just right away that can make a huge difference um other things okay so there can be some quite deep issues here like for example the sound of your voice that you like or that other people like sometimes generating that is painful and what i would say to that is i mean i'm not one of those singing teachers who says oh you know what you know people like that yes but if you sing with proper technique they're going to like it more and you're going to like it more no not necessarily so <laughs> unfortunately sometimes you actually it can be quite painful you have to give up the thing that sounds good but what i would say is that first of all you will find if you give up those habits you will find a very expressive instrument underneath it that you can do some amazing things with and secondly you will also find that a little bit you know 10 percent 10 percent of the time of the thing that sounds good but gives you pain may not give you pain and also i found that in a performance when you don't do that for most of the performance and then you come in with a little hint of it at a certain point that can be extremely powerful and it adds a dynamic to your singing that you would not have if you were constantly constantly using this thing i mean i, I used to have a kind of a, a raspy screech that i used to love the sound of and other people used to go oh wow your voice is really unusual and i don't have a really unusual voice anymore i have mostly a clear voice and then some percentage of the time i have that unusual rasp and it, it almost feels like the less i bring it into the voice the more exciting the performance is because when i do bring it in it's such a surprise and it's such a contrast so, and I've gained, lot, gained lots of other freedom of expression that I just never had when I was doing this raspy thing the whole time. So, although I've lost something, I think I've, in the end I've probably gained more, but it's, it's a, a long process gaining more. Um, and it's complicated, it's not just as simple as replacing it with something that's better. You may have to take some steps forward, backward in order to move forward, and that's, that's just reality, I think. But you will move forward in the end. Um, I think, I mean, you may, depending on how serious your problem is, you may need a long period of rest. You may need medical treatment, and I can't really advise you on that. I never got that far. I did damage my voice, but not badly enough that it needed anything more than, on a few occasions, a few weeks rest, like a month, literally something like that. And that can be beneficial because you do, you really experience your habits after you've not used them for a month or so in anger, so to speak, you know, in a real performance. Um, the things to do are to sing with attention 
So without doing other things, especially playing instruments, and especially having an audience in front of you, and especially having other things going on, you know, really pay attention to what's going on in your body and, and learn from the other videos that I've put up and the other masses of free material that's available on the web for what things to pay attention for and pay attention to. Sing quietly, microphone and headphones, turn up your voice balance really high. That's, that's a, you know, or sing in a whisper, sing gently, because that will trigger less of your habit patterns. And gradually having learnt to sing without them, then you can sing a little bit louder and with a little bit more emotion. Moving to emotion, sing without emotion. Take away that, ah, you know, like the, the kinds of expressions that you put in when you're really going for it, just to remove them. Like completely blank face in front of the mirror. Just really, really blank expression of singing, very flat notes. As, as focus on free and effortless. It's a bit like, I mean, they, they say that, and another thing I do is um, barefoot running, and one of the first thing they tell, things they tell you is focus on easy. Don't focus on fast, focus on easy. And if you have to go slow, and it's, it's exactly the same with this, it's focus on effortless and gentle. Take away the expression, the emotion, the loudness, the everything. And if, if you start from that point, then you can gradually learn what it is you can bring in and what it is you can't, and how often you can bring it in. Um, lastly, work on your general health. I mean, like I said at the beginning, if, if there's some health problem that is causing some gripping or tension in your voice, then really you're going to be limited by that until you work out that health problem. And it's just, it's just as harsh as that. And it, it feels good to be healthy, you know, and so some of the things you have to do, do to be healthy are fun, and some of them aren't. And just, if you want to be a good singer, just, just deal with it, you know. <laughs> um, enjoy the things that are fun, and just take the things that aren't. There's a, something hard that you have to do in order to improve your voice, which is what we're all here to do. I hope that gave you some ideas. See you next time.